Okay, the one new thing we would have done tomorrow in class, but now that we're doing a test tomorrow in class, because it's not today, I'd like to do it with you now. And that is back to um, the tension that we were talking about Friday. So we talked about tension in ropes, strings, cables, etc. Imagine if we have a box, we connect a cable to it, and then we pull up. So really what we're saying is this is the tension in the rope that we're pulling. Or if there's two boxes connected together perhaps, and then you pull on one of them, then the, this is the, in here would be the tension in this cable. Okay, so we talked about kit tension. We talked about the fact that the rope needs to be tinier than the thing it's connected to, so that way we can ignore the mass. We talked about the rope needs to be uniform and undamaged, and that way the force along it is always the same. And we talked about that if you were to put it over a cable, or over a pulley, that as long as the pulley is frictionless, then and uh, then we can ignore any all the, then all the pulley does is change the direction of the force. It doesn't take any of the force out. We can ignore the friction and the mass of the pulley. Okay. What we didn't get a chance to do on Friday was an example, but you did some in grade eleven. They were the elevator problems, and don't worry as you're groaning. They're not really going to be that bad, and we're only going to do a couple of them. It's just to get you into the groove, and then we'll move to the multiple mass ones. So an example would be, this is an elevator, and let's suppose it has a mass of 3,200 kilograms. Okay, so FG is acting down, and the tension in the cable holding the elevator is acting up. And if we say that the elevator begins to go upward at a rate of 0.55 meters per second squared, so it's accelerating upward. The question would be, what is the tension in the in the cable that's doing this? And so it's just some of the forces, but in the y direction. And so it'll be Ft minus Fg is equal to May, and it's asking for tension. So just take your Fg over. So it'll be May plus Mg, <coughs> and then fill your numbers in. So 3,200 kilograms times that 0.55 meters per second squared, which goes in as positive because it's going up, plus your Fg, which is 3,200 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. And notice there's no negative on this guy because we put the negative right here. So you don't put two negatives in. We've looked after the direction of the force right there, and that force just happens to be equal to Mg. Okay, and so then you find your Ft 33,152 newtons works out to be positive, so it's going up. But what if the elevator was accelerating down at the same rate? So what if A was 0.55 meters per second squared down this time? We would do exactly the same thing. Some of the forces in the Y equals MAY. It would be... Ft and Fg is equal to May. And if you want it to be accurate, then you might call down positive. Um, okay, but I let's, let's call down negatives just so we don't screw you up. So we'll put a negative on our Fg. We're still solving for Ft. So it'll be May plus Mg. Okay. MAY, M is still 3,200 kilograms, but the acceleration is downward, and so it'll be negative 0.55 meters per second squared plus 3,200 kilograms. And again, no negative on the 9.81 meters per second squared because we already put it in right up there. And this time, the FT is 29,632 newtons. And it would be uh, not down. Uh, it would be up. I don't know why I put it down there. It would be up. It worked out to be positive. It would be up. Okay. Um, all good. So those are the elevator questions. Um, and then, so on page uh, 478, 
numbers 14 to 17, but for Wednesday, not for tomorrow, for Wednesday, so after your test. And I'm going to add one more in this one other new thing that I'm going to talk about. And the other new thing is with that pulley that I drew up there. How much time do I have left? Okay. So I had a pulley up there. I had a mass on one side. I had a mass on the other side. This contraption, pulley with two masses hanging off, this is actually called an Atwood machine. It's kind of a fancy name for just a pulley with two masses, but it's called an Atwood machine. This is M1. This is M2. We think of the forces, FG1 would be acting down, FG2 would be acting uh, down on this side, and then there would be tension on number one on this side, on number two on this side. But remember our rule with the pulley, that all the pulley does is change the direction of the force. So this tension F1 and this tension F2, they are really just equal to each other, equal and opposite thanks to the pulley. Right? If we were to draw it in a straight line, because all the pulley does is change the direction, FG2 would be pulling this way, FG1 would be pulling this way, and the tensions would just be facing off against each other, and really, in the overall scheme of things, they would kind of be canceling each other out. How does one decide which way this system would move? Whichever M is bigger, because that's the FG that's going to win. Okay, more important than ever, we have to call the direction of motion positive. You can't say up anymore because one will move up when the other moves down. Okay, so direction of motion will be positive. Whichever one is bigger will win. That one will move down. The other one will move up. Before we actually do an example, though, we have to talk about two different types of forces. There are forces that are called internal forces and forces that are called external forces. This whole thing is known as a system. And so internal forces are inside the system. It would be the tension, right? The FTs pulling off against each other are internal forces. They are forces between the objects in a system, and they don't actually affect the motion of the overall system. Right? So if it doesn't matter if these two FTs are a thousand or if they're ten newtons, they're gonna pull off against each other, but the overall system, the way it the way it's gonna move and how much it's gonna accelerate has nothing to do with these internal forces. So they are the forces between objects in a system and they do not affect the overall motion of the system. External forces, I bet you can guess. They are forces that act on the system from the outside, like these two FGs, okay? And they are what determine the motion of the system, okay? So they are forces that act on the system from the outside, and they determine the motion of the system. Whichever one of these FGs is bigger, that's how it's going to accelerate. That's what's going to determine, th their relationship is going to determine the motion of the system. Examples of internal forces, tension. Examples of external forces, gravity and friction. Okay, so if we wanted to know which way is this system going to move, we would just do sum of the forces is equal to m total a. And notice I didn't put an x here or a y. If you draw it this way, it looks like an x. If you draw it this way, it looks like a y. So I don't care which way you look at it. But if, when we're doing some of the forces, it will be FG2 and FG1. And that will be equal to M1 plus M2 times A. Now, if you want it, you could put the two FTs in. They're going in opposite direction, so it would be FT minus FT, and it'll just disappear. Which one of these is positive depends on which one is bigger. So if we make M1 10 kilograms, and if we make M2 20 kilograms, then this way will be positive, this way will be negative, FG2 will go in as positive, FG1 will go in as negative, so it would become M2G minus M1G is equal to M1 plus M2A. And maybe the question says solve for A. So then you would divide by the M1 and the plus the M2, and you would get your A. So it would be 20 kilograms times 9.81, got to run out of time to be continued.